Happy Monday, COP family, and welcome to your message recap. My name is Larisha Johnson, and I'm so excited to welcome our sister, our favorite, don't tell anyone, <laughs> Elder Jackie Chris. How you doing, man? <laughs> Hi, family. Hi, Larisha. Hi, Pastor Dennis. Um, family, I'm so excited to be here with you and so excited to see what God is going to bring to us. Looking forward to what we're going to hear. Oh, my gosh, y'all. If you had been, we prepare, as some, most of you know, we prepare and we pray before we um, go forth with our discussion. And we are stirred up. We are ready to go. And we are ready and excited to welcome. He's no stranger to the message recap. We, we love it when he's here with us. We're so just honored for your presence. Help us welcome Pastor Dennis Armstrong. How are you? How are you doing? It's good to see you, COP family. Excited, uh, Sister Jackie. I think this is our first time doing it together. Oh. So I'm excited. I'm excited to see what the Lord has. Yeah. Okay. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> so before we get into discussion, I just wanted to remind folks of just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, I'm so distracted by you saying that's a, for, this is the first time with Elder Jackie. That's amazing. You're in for a treat. That's all I got to say. So just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, you can go to our website. It's www.cop.church. And that's where you can um, go and download all of the sermon notes. Uh, I highly recommend you download the sermon notes from this weekend's teaching. You can rewatch the teaching. Uh, you can replay the message recaps um, and previous teaching. And the notes are there as well. There is an event section. Um, same with our mobile app. There's an event section where you can stay in touch with everything that's happening in the center we're entering into the fall season and there's so many great things happening at the center. We're entering into our 35th church year anniversary and we have a gala coming in October. So get your tickets for that. You do not want to miss it. Uh, so many fun and exciting things happening at the center. So again, check out our events page. Just keep in touch and stay abreast of everything that's happening. Omni groups are popping off at everywhere. Make sure you're plugged into one of them. You don't necessarily have to be a member of Center of Praise. So it's a, a place of fellowship and growth together with like-minded believers. So tap into that. Um, I think that's it as far as housekeeping goes. So let's jump into this week's discussion. I got my notes. We are on part two of Joy of the Spirit. And this weekend's teaching is uh, entitled Jesus is Friends. And a few scripture references you want to make sure you jot down. The first one is John 15, verses 12 through 17. Then we have John 13, uh, 34 through 35. And some of these verses, depending on which celebration you were in, we didn't get to all of these scriptures, but they're in the notes. So again, make sure you download those. We have second, or excuse me, 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 12. And then lastly, Romans 13 and 10. And um, Pastor Dennis, I was saying before um, we started um, recording this particular discussion, I was very um, appreciative of the fact that you gave the context of John 15, because um, the, the scripture focus, uh, and we'll, we'll read it a little later, uh, but Jesus was preparing his disciples to be without him. He was headed to the cross. He knew the weight of that, the magnitude, the disciples didn't. And his command to them on his way to the cross was to love each other the way that he loved them. So I appreciate just having that full context of the chapter, not just that verse. Um, and then he also said the reason why that he wanted them to love each other was so that his joy would be their joy and then their joy would be complete. Um, one of the things I think was is pretty interesting to call out is that this wouldn't have been the first time that the disciples heard something like really wild and radical from Jesus about love. So if you go back to uh, Matthew 5 through 8, that's uh, like the collections of teachings around the Sermon on the Mount. And then in that teaching, there it's like chapter 5 around verse 43, Jesus says, uh, you've heard it said, love your neighbor, but hate your enemies. But I say, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And so again, this wouldn't have been the first time like they heard Jesus say something like wild about just really living in a different way. So it was very on brand for Jesus to say. Um, what I wanted, we'll start with you, Pastor Dennis, if you could just help us connect those dots between uh, the joy of Jesus, where Jesus is saying, I want my joy to be in you, and loving each other as he loves us, especially during hard times. That's a, that's a really good question. Um, you know, the joy, the joy of Jesus and loving one another, they... They go hand in hand. Um, you know, just thinking about it right now, just if I'm able to love you the way Jesus loved me, I mean, 
the fact that Jesus gets joy out of loving me, right? Like he's not, he's not like, oh, I got to love Dennis again. You know what I mean? He's not like, he gets joy out of loving me. That is so profound to me that Jesus gets joy out of loving me, out of forgiving me, out of being kind to me, being patient with me, having self-control with me, like all of these things, he gets joy in doing so, you know? And so it just makes me think about if I, and I say if, because loving like Jesus is very difficult, (laughs) but like, if I'm able to love like Christ, then I'll be able to experience that same joy of, man, my sister was going through it. And she said some things that I would have taken offense to, but I was able to put that, lay my life down and say an exact word that got to where she needed. I mean, how much joy is there in that? You know what I mean? When I can put down myself to lift you up. I mean, cause that's literally walking in the steps of Christ. Cause that's what he did, you know? And so that's just so amazing. In addition to that, from a different perspective that, thinking that I can love somebody without the joy of Jesus in my heart Mm -hmm. is also difficult to do, right? Like having the joy of Jesus, having the love of Christ, receiving all of those things will in turn be able to allow me to give the love out. You know, it's just like any, it's just like anything on an airplane where it says, Hey, you get your, get your little thing on your nose first so that you can put the one, put it on your, on your neighbors. Right. And so like being able to receive, I mean, the hardest thing about being a Christian for me is receiving God's love. I mean, that's probably the hardest thing because like, what do you mean you love me for real? What do you mean you love me despite my mistake? What do you mean? Like receiving his love on Sunday is cool. Like the the understanding of his love is cool, but receiving his love throughout the week in the midst of whatever it is that you're going through that's when it's super hard you know but once you can receive that man then you're like oh my gosh this thing that i've received this joy that i received i have to go and give it to someone else i have to go love like what i get it oh my gosh i have to give it i can't keep this to myself and that's why we disciple we don't just disciple because we're supposed to it's because yo i got something that is so good and i cannot keep it to myself you know and so and so yeah so i I think that's probably the dots that i would connect um between those two Oh, that's so good. Oh, that's so good. I love how you called out just the truth. And I resonate with that truth too. That's the truth for me about receiving God's love is probably the hardest part. Not even probably. It is the hardest part for me. Um, Because just in our society, it's so transactional. You do this, I do that, right? And I know what I've done doesn't equal to what you're, what the love that I'm receiving that he gives to me. So it's, it's, my brain is like, okay, but I didn't do, I didn't do, but I'm just so grateful for the the teaching about that we've been receiving about. It really is, it really is a walk of the Holy Spirit and being empowered by the Holy Spirit and not our works. Um, so I just appreciate you calling that that because that's a real thing. And I think from there, like you said, that's that's where the joy comes from. And and to be able to have that in another person that you can physically be with, like we have Holy Spirit, we have Jesus, but when you're walking through something hard, like I need my sister, like I need my brother, even if it's just to sit with me and you don't, maybe don't have the right things to say, but your presence, you're with me. So I, I just, that's so powerful, Pastor Dennis. I appreciate that. You know, Pastor Dennis, I love how you sh- said that, you know, there is joy in um, giving the love to someone else. You know, um, there is joy in being able to be there for someone else there there is joy when you see that you can love when you've been mistreated by someone else (laughs) Um, and I will have to say that that is a that is that is learning to walk in the spirit of love because you said that love um love is a fruit of the spirit love love is a fruit of the spirit which means that love is a spirit because it comes from the spirit right you know so then that says to me is that i've got to sit with this spirit of love so that i can then um accept what understand because to me it's a foreign language you know because when we think of love we think of love as as what we the feel good what the world says right no but we know what first corinthians 13 says about love right you know we know that it tells us love is kind and those are like entering to a foreign country okay and you don't know the language and you don't know how to do it right and so we sit with 
the Holy Spirit and that spirit of love, you know, is what gives us that um, ability to walk this out and to receive as, as Larissa and you have said, and for me, it is a hard thing to understand that um, Christ loves us in where we are, you know, and that we are righteous in where we are because we identify ourselves by our actions and not by um, and not by who we are in Christ. And so therefore, when we go to sit with um, offer love to a friend or offer love to an enemy, um, we do it. We can only do it through the spirit of love and through the spirit sitting with the Holy Spirit, you know. And so therefore, when we do that, then we have this joy. And I think for me, it's an example of um, you know, I will just say that, you know, there are times and I'm just going to be completely transparent when my husband, uh, just, you know, he's wrong. I know he's wrong. You know, he, 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 and, and, and it just, uh, right. You know, and when the Holy spirit says, Jackie, you are what I need you to be still. And I need you to be quiet. And I need you to just let me do this. And when you sit there and you can do that, and then you can later see, sometimes you don't see God, what God does, but there's a joy in the fact that you didn't react in the same way that you reacted before. There's a joy in the fact that you can turn around and see where God has grown you to, you know, where you've grown from. You, you're like, oh my God, you know, I used to go off, I used to yell, I used to scream. And, and you can see this growth and there's this joy in the fact that you are showing God's love and, and the fact that he's revealing to you where I brought you from, you know? And so there's the joy of Jesus Christ that you can see God working inside of you. And then he's transforming you as you are walking out this love. And I especially know that when the time is hard and most difficult for me is when I can look back and see where God has brought me from and how he uses, um, uh, the the pressing of the the pressing of the crushing of the oil the crushing of the olive seed to get the oil out you know that crushing right there um to get that blessed oil out and um he I don't know how he does it y'all but when you are sitting with him in love there there's it turns into this place where you could say oh my god thank you I, I I God I give you glory and praise I mean I find myself thanking God for the journey that I'm on and the hard time that I'm going through and joy coming out of that and 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 being able to walk out love to the person and what they've done. And it's not easy. It's not easy. And it's, I love Elder Jackie that you called out. It's a journey. It's a walk. It's a journey. It's, that is encouragement to me to know that I don't have to be there today um, or right away. Um, and it's not even like a straight line. Like it's not linear, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you, you you go up and then you you're tested in that area, you grow and then you're kind of tested. and then there's something else. And then you go up and then you're like, oh, yeah. no, I failed that test. Let's go back, go back to the word, or or I passed it. Okay, mm -hmm. now you're to the next level, right? So it's not this like straight line. And I think yeah, that's and I think Larisha, it's a journey for. I don't think we ever accomplish. It. I don't think we ever attain. You know? no. <laughs> you don't win. I mean, you win, but you don't like. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> Not the price is white, you know, it's not that. <laughs> yes, you know, and I think that every time he grows us to another level of walking out this love, of walking out this love, of doing it the way Jesus did it. And that um, really requires us, you know, understanding this foreign language. And the only way, as Pastor Dennis shared on Sunday, it's not sitting with you or sitting with Pastor Dennis, is sitting with the spirit of love and letting that spirit of love do the transformation in our heart. And as he does the transformation in our heart, we find ourselves with giving joy. We find ourselves feeling joy with giving love to others, especially to those who mistreat us. It's like, yeah, you didn't get, well, my thing is you didn't get me. <laughs> that's so that's good. probably not as good. <laughs> I, I'm gonna with that, you know? And maybe it's not like you as the person, sometimes for me as you as the person, but like, that spirit of yeah. animosity or that spirit of jealousy mm -hmm. or spirit of hate didn't get, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I can see where I've grown past that. Mm -hmm. And again, I appreciate it. It is a grow. It is a growing and it's not overnight. Um, but we, we, you get there, you know, mm -hmm. and when you get there, that's another thing you got to mm -hmm. grow toward. So I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. And I love how you brought out about, um, cause I have this in my notes too, to help us for the next question about, Loving someone the way Jesus loves us requires us to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. There's no way to do it without Holy Spirit. 
And then Pastor Dennis, you also called out that in addition to being empowered, it's laying down ourselves, laying down our pride and laying down that ego, et cetera. And then we've been talking about the fruit of the spirit. So when I was thinking about that, I just, my brain jumped to Galatians 5 and 22, mm-hmm. where it talks about the fruit of the spirit, like how mm-hmm. you do that, because that's a valid question. Like, how do we do that? And so I wanted to hear from the two of you, and we'll start with you, Elder Jackie. I was like, this is a safe place, family. We're going to, we're going to get deep. We'll go as deep as y'all want to go. But I just thought it'd be helpful just to, if you would share an experience of where Holy Spirit helped you to love someone the way that he loves you. How did you walk out Galatians 5 and 22? Oh, Holy Spirit. Um, what do you, you want me to share? Yeah. Mm. Um, so um, this is a sensitive one. Um, um, in my family, when I was younger, um, there was someone that did something to me that violated me. Right. And, um, uh, it was very, and, and, you know, when it was brought to my parents, um, I wasn't asked what happened and I got punished for it. Right. You know, so I got punished for something that was done to me, (laughs) um, that violated me. And I, I, I didn't get to, you know, everything was a punishment, you know, and I didn't do anything wrong. Right. But I got punished for it. And so, um, and, and, and I was younger, but it took a long time for the Holy spirit to walk me through how to love and how to forgive and how to, and, and how to have that, um, uh, how to have that joy and, and, and to be able to, and this was a family relative that did that to me. So how to be able to come and embrace and to love them um, um, and and to have that unconditional love. And, you know, and it was uh, a lot of time spending with God, but also the Holy Spirit was um, also dealing with me, not only about how it wasn't my fault, but also that this is where these people were. I mean, he started to show me where they were and what they were dealing with, you know, and that y'all um, listen, I'm not, this is not easy. I'm uh, this, this stuff is not easy. This stuff is hard. I mean, there's, there's pain, there's brokenness, there's, there's hurt, there's mistrust, you know, um, and, and, and at, t- and at that, at that age, I wasn't able to speak to my parents about, you know, I, you know, I, I grew up in, you know, the parents say the thing and the child shuts their mouth, right? You know? So I didn't grow up where I got to say what I felt, you know, and it wasn't until much later in life and as an adult that I had the opportunity to share with my mom and, um, and how I was treated and what happened, you know, and she apologized, you know, but it took, um, um, me spending time with God and God doing a work, getting really the anger, getting really the hurt, getting really the pain, um, getting really frustration. I, I even did some counseling, you know, because God works through counseling out now. Don't, don't, don't think that you don't need counseling because the Holy Spirit works through counselors and they are good, you know, when you get a good one. But um, I will tell you uh, that the way that the gentleness that God used um, and the way that he worked with me and he brought people who had had that same experience, who would share what they were dealing with and we would pray together. And the Holy Spirit helped us, helped us walk this out through our counseling and through prayer. And I started to see, I don't even, I don't even know when God transformed me. I can't say, but I just know that there came a point where I was able to love I was able to give hugs. I'm able to have a great conversation. I'm able, I'm joyful. You know, I've, the forgiveness came through the transformation of, as Pastor Dennis said, sitting with the Holy Spirit. He's the one who, the sitting with the spirit of love, sitting with the Holy Spirit and, and continuing to stay in the word. And, and as, and here's the thing, it wasn't like I was constantly focused on that. It was what we're doing, you know, the teaching of love, the teaching of the Holy Spirit, the teaching of faith, the teaching of joy. All those teachings were doing something inside of me that was bringing this this transformation and change. And it was working on that thing that I didn't even know was happening at the time, you know, and God brought me to to a place uh, with um, where I was able to walk out the fruits of the spirit and to be patient and, and to, and, and I found it when this person came up to me and gave me a hug. And I was just so shocked that I was able to embrace that 
person with the hug and 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 know that there was nothing there that that there was a complete healing um but it was not um i will tell you that the walk is with the word mm -hmm. the walk is with the word mm -hmm. the walk is with the word and 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 it wasn't something that um the holy spirit had me um, dwell on on a regular basis you know but i prayed about it i left it with him and he walked this out through the word and it, even when you look at the fruits of the spirit in Galatians, where it talks about love is patient, love is kind. Um, God only puts on you. He doesn't give you more than you can bear. So it wasn't like I was having to face it all the time or that individual was coming to me all the time. But every time that we had interaction, God had done something to me, you know, that helped me be patient, that helped me be kind, that helped me um, not judge, you know. Um, and I think that was uh, it was a journey through the spirit. You got y'all was a journey through the word. That's all I could say is a journey through the word. Elder Jackie, thank you for sharing and trusting us with that. That's so powerful. Mm -hmm. I know that you have changed somebody's life today. Mm -hmm. Somebody that. needed to hear that because mm -hmm. as Pastor Dennis was sharing, like this, this is real. Like this mm -hmm. is real life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how do we apply what we learn on Sunday and what we, you know, learn on, you know, if you're able to be in a, a like a small group, some people are not. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, aware they are encountering the world like how do I apply it how do I make it real and like get through this life like successfully and keep my right mind and keep my peace or 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 at least get to a place of peace you know so I just I really encourage anyone who's struggling with any type of you know abuse or addiction or anything like that like you are not you're gonna make me cry other Jackie you are not outside of the reach of God. You're not outside of the reach of the Holy Spirit. And he's already, not only are you not outside of his reach, he's already holding you. So I pray you find encouragement. Thank you, Elder Jackie, for sharing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Powerful. Woo. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you, Elder Jackie, for that, seriously. Mm -hmm. um, the question assumes that you have an experience <laughs> of where you Okay, you're like, I haven't grown there yet, but this is what I'm, I'm praying towards. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to y'all at all. It is very no, difficult for me, <laughs> for me to think said, of a specific time. I'm on time. my way, y'all. Yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> exactly. And I'm in the middle. <laughs> right, right. I'm in Galatians 5. I guess I haven't got to 22 yet. Okay. Nah, um, <laughs> but... No, it, um, there's been a couple of times where, and you know, it's funny because the person or the people who have been loved by me, the way God has loved me will never know because the main part of the love that I, in 522 is, uh, self-control, yeah. the one that I deal with. <laughs> so the, when I didn't cuss you out, <laughs> like you would never know that you were about to get it. You know, <laughs> that is, is all the Holy. I promise you yeah. every time that I didn't cuss somebody out, it was not Dennis Armstrong. I will tell you that for sure. That was the Holy spirit. And so yeah. there's been times over the last couple of years where I have seen, and again, finding an example was hard for me, but where I've been in situations and I'm like, man, I can't believe this person is talking to me like this, you know? And like I shared, I don't remember what service it was. All three services were way different, but sure. um, yeah. I but listened I don't, to the uh, second one <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I know. So different, <laughs> so different. Um, but, you know, uh, there's be times when like, it's just like, People are talking to me crazy. And it's one thing if it's a stranger, because it's like, okay, whatever. But when it's somebody, you know, T.D. Jakes has said something where you have these circles and it's closer that someone gets into your inner circle, the more that they can impact your heart. If they're on the outside, I don't care really what you have to say. But once you start getting into the inner circle and you say some things. And so there's been a few times where like family had talked to me crazy or maybe not came at me sideways, but I knew you were talking about me and I wanted to load up the clips and just come at you. You know what I mean? But, but the Holy spirit has really just been on some son <laughs> self-control, like, come on. And reading self-control does nothing for me. Reading 522 every minute of the day does nothing for me. It's about taking 522 into my closet with the Holy spirit and letting him 
flow that over my life. Because if it's just reading, I can forget that I ever read that. But when the Holy Spirit deposits that up in you and covers your entire situation with it, then you can't even do it if you wanted to. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because the Holy Spirit, I mean, it's the fruit of the Spirit. It's not the fruit of our strength. It's not the right. fruit of our knowledge. It's not the fruit of our anything. It's the fruit of the Spirit, right? And so he's the one who, I did not produce the self-control. He produced it. And so it, that's, to me, I would say more often than not, that is when I've seen the Holy Spirit at work in my life as it relates to this question is when I am able to go like this <laughs> and not even if it's literally and this is going to make me look bad. But even if I'm on the phone and I literally have to go on mute <laughs> so that <laughs> so I'm like, listen, I'm just going to preface. I'm just going to premeditate my self-control and I'm just going to go on mute so so that you can't hear nothing going on on this end right now. <laughs> And that's sometimes like how the Holy Spirit does it. And it's amazing. And and I think Elder Jackie may have said this. It's so beautiful. Oh, it's so joyful when you can see the fruit, um, the fruit of his spirit, self-control. But um, when you can see the outcome mm. of his fruit, when you can see that, man, mm. I know that if I would have cussed this person out, I would have felt good, but then they would have said this, I would have said that, and it would have been all bad, and we would have inevitably had to have a conversation another week or two from now when we calm down. But when you can just exercise self-control in the conversation, there is never a time that you exercise the fruit of the Spirit, and it doesn't come out heavenly. Mm -hmm. Like, never will that happen. And so it's such a joyful thing, whether the person hangs up or whether the person apologizes or whether they just continue doing your thing, their thing, but you're able to see, and it's like an out-of-body experience because you can see yourself standing tall and being like, wow, yep, it's good. Like, yep. I'm not tripping, mm -hmm. you know? And a part of that is laying your life down. I think about laying your life down, like Sister Elder Jackie said, like crucifying your stuff. I think that was off, off camera, but um, when you are... <laughs> When you're trying to see if a person is dead and real physically dead, right? Like you poke them and if they respond, if it's a dead body and you poke them with the sharpest thing, it doesn't matter. They're not going to respond because they're dead. And that's how I want to live my life, that mm -hmm. someone can poke me with the sharpest thing and I am not going to respond because my flesh is crucified, because my life is laid down. That's what I want to do. But in order for me to say, I'm scared to even say that, that that's what I want to do, because if I say I want to do that, God God got some folks with some sticks that are about to poke me. And so what I have to do is make sure I'm in my closet strapped up with 522 and the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, do your thing and produce your fruit. And I'm for sure not coming out of this closet until I, that fruit is all around me because without it, self-control is nowhere to be found. Right. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Pastor Dennis, that's a word that's right so there. We could, we're, we're, we could be done right now. That's mm -hmm. it. That is mm -hmm. such a word. And that was a part of the teaching where we were talking off camera. I was like, what do you mean I can't have the last word? Like, what? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> I'm right. <laughs> but I, I, to your point, there are plenty of times where I want to say the thing or do the thing. And Holy Spirit is like, mm, okay, daughter, no, we're not going to do that. And I obey Holy Spirit. But on the inside, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, my God, this is killing me. And Holy Spirit is like, yep, it is. Killing yeah. that flesh. I'm like, it's it's like when Elder Cindy said last Sunday when she had to delete that email, remember? Yes, <laughs> yes. Like, delete, delete. And then it's just like, okay, by the time you have this whole dissertation, just my keyboard just- Yeah, yeah. And then it's just, yeah. okay. But it's just powerful to see that transformation. And I yeah. appreciate both of you sharing because it doesn't feel good at the time, you know? It is yeah. hard, but it's possible. So I, I appreciate y'all for sharing that. Just you know what, Larisha, the Holy Spirit has been oh. dealing with me on is every time I'm prompted, he goes, um, there's a big old plank in your eye. Oh. Come good. on, man. Oh, my. Woo. Yes. Same here. That, oh, my goodness. I mean, he has just been he's just been bombarding me. I mean, even the thought before I say anything, just the thought he goes, oh, there's a plank in your eye. Yes. Let's see what that is. And when them scriptures with the plank in your eye. <laughs> when them scriptures become real, like oh yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. 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 That's how you finna be. Like <laughs> yeah. 
that's it. That's it. That's what I've been dealing with the past few several months. He's just been, oh, so, mm, well, there's a plan. I mean, the judgment doesn't even get to here. It doesn't never reach here. It's here. And he's just like, mm -hmm. there's a plank in your eye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, what are you going to do with Larissa, Sister Larissa, they, I just wanted to touch on the on, on the getting the last word thing, because that was literally in my notes after like the first service. Yeah. And I don't even know if I actually said this or not, but the notes I put was because in verse um, 16, he talks about that you going and bearing fruit and that your fruit should remain. And so God was telling me, he says, listen, in, in these conversations, do you want to bear fruit or do you want to get the last word? And I'm like, dang, because you can't do both. <laughs> you yeah. can bear fruit or you can get the last word. You can bear fruit or you can be right. You can bear fruit or you can get your point across, but you ain't going to do both. Yeah. So I was just like, man. And then when you think about that in the conversation, especially with someone you love, because that's where this really comes into play yeah. is when it's someone that you love. And when you can say, you know what, I want to bear fruit that's going to remain. How Thank you, Lord. How powerful is that, that your fruit is going to remain? This conversation is probably going to be one that the only thing that comes from it is the anger that came out of it, unless mm -hmm. you bear fruit in that conversation because the fruit of that conversation will remain so the next time you have a conversation about something like this your spouse is going to remember how you handled business how y'all handled business and the fruit of the conversation you had last week is going to remain this week next week and the weeks to come but it's all about that decision am i going to bear fruit or am i going to get the last word because if you get the last word it ain't going to be the last word it might be the last word for that conversation but it's going to continue to happen until you bear fruit. Yeah. And that fruit that she's bearing, if she gets the last word, is that same thing over and over again. Yes. I, I loved how you also said that that fruit that we bear goes from generation. It remains from generation to generation to generation. I loved how you said that too. It's really good. Oh, I'm trying to find it. You're making me think about it. Every time we talk about fruit, I go back to the garden. Uh, think about that garden story where God is telling uh, Adam and Eve, like of all the fruit, and he created all these trees, these beautiful trees that had fruit that were pleasant to look at and pleasurable and good fruit. Eat it. Eat those fruit. It's lasted fruit. These two over here don't eat these trees. Tree of knowledge of good and evil, tree of life. I, don't worry about those. But all these other trees and fruit, like that lasting fruit, eat of that. And so I was trying to find the scripture, but um, I didn't want to interrupt you talking, but I just... Oh my God, it's so powerful that that fruit remains. Oof. Mm -hmm. So, so good. Ah, Y'all, I'm telling you, we're at our last question. This is so good. I want to read really quick to set us up for our last question. Um, I'm going to pull up a scripture, uh, the, like the main scripture that we read this weekend. And it's John 15, 16 through 17. And I want to read it from the message. So let me pull it up here. 15. Uh, okay, here we go. It says, I'm no longer calling, this is Jesus talking. He says, I'm no longer calling you servants because you don't understand, because servants don't understand what their master is thinking mm -hmm. and planning. No, I've named you friends because I've let you in on everything I've heard from the father. You didn't choose me. Remember, I chose you and put you in the world to bear fruit fruit that won't spoil. As fruit bearers, whatever you ask the father in relation to me, he gives you. Now just go ahead and read 17. But remember the root command, love one another. And we'll start with uh, you, uh, Pastor Dennis. What would it look like to fully embrace that we are no longer servants because Jesus has named us his friend? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that is something that is definitely... Uh, struggle for those who serve um we start to identify as being servants and it's like because we i mean we are it's not like he's not negating the fact that we serve him so it's definitely we're serving him but man if we fully embraced his friendship and everything that comes from his friendship that i mean he gives us everything you know it's like it's like uh if you had a friend 
if you had a friend that was like a celebrity or a powerful person or what have you, and you accepted the fact that, man, he calls me his boy, his friend, you know, he's taking me to vacations and all of these things and letting me access him in ways that like I used to be friends with Bobby. Well, I'm still friends with Bobby Jackson. He used to play for the Kings and um, there'll be people who would come up to him and ask for autograph or whatever, but us, his boys, like we got to know him. You know what I mean? We got to know him, who he is. Some folks know his stats. Oh, Bobby, you got, and you got six man of the year and all that stuff. They know his stats, but I know him. I know what he likes. I know what he dislikes. I know where he likes to play basketball, like all, all of these, where he likes to golf, all of this stuff, you know? And so when you get to a point where you can understand that you are God, Jesus's friend, you start to realize, oh shoot, like he's giving me access. I can know about him. Like he says, like, I'm telling you the things that my father is saying. Like we are at such a point sometimes where we act like it's a strain to hear what God has to say. Mm -hmm. It's like, God, please, just, just a little word, please. And we're like over here waiting for weeks for a little word. It's because we're not just fully embracing that we are his friends, that he is not withholding revelation from us. Is he going to give us the entire story? Maybe not. But is he going to tell us what the next step is? Absolutely. He's not leaving us in the dark to figure it out on our own. But when we embrace ourselves as only a servant, you know, just like if you're at work and a boss tells you to do something, you're going to be like, okay, I'll try to do this. You have no idea what to do, but you're just trying to figure it out. When you're a servant, you're like, I don't want to bother the master. I don't want to bother him. Let me just try to figure this out. I'm going to get it wrong and whatever. But when it's like, you're, that's, I'm his friend, then I can be like, yo, bro, like, I don't really know how to do this. Can you please help me? Give me insight on how to do this. And Jesus is like, I got you. Yeah. I literally got you. And then he starts to show you, this is how you do it. This is what you do. This is what you don't do. This is who you hang out with. This is who you don't hang out with. All of these things. And so the 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 uh, benefit of his friendship is just like, imagine the father and the son having a conversation. It's like when, it's like when we were kids and like the grown folks that at the grown folks table and they were talking about family business stuff. We had no idea what they were talking about. If we walked in the kitchen, and they're like, get out the kitchen. We talking right now, you know? But then when you got to be that age, whether it was 18 or 23, whatever it was, when you, oh shoot, they didn't stop talking when I tiptoed into the kitchen. Oh shoot, they asked me to sit down at the table and they told me about my uncle, some stuff I didn't know about, like all of this stuff. You're like, oh man, I'm getting access, right? And that's what we have when we embrace the friendship of God or the friendship of Jesus, that we start to get insight into his workings we don't have to just guess and say oh god i'm just here i'm just walking and you do your thing it's like no i get to hear what you have to say about the very walk that i'm on and i'm telling you man like this is this whole message was for me because i've been struggling with embracing the friendship of jesus so when it comes to re my real situation i shared with y'all earlier the the, the new situation that I'm in and how I'm trying to get led by the spirit. And I'm acting like, I don't know what he's saying to me. I act like I don't have access to his conversation about it. I'm just over here trying it on my own and God, you're going to send me. No, dude, like you have access to his table. Like you have access to his, his conversation. You're not just a servant. You don't just put your head down and put glasses on the table and act like you're not hearing anything and then leave the room until they call you back to clear the table. That's not what you're doing. You are literally, he has prepared a table before us in the presence of our enemies like he has given us a table he's given us access to the table and at the table we can share in the provision and we can hear what they have to say about us yes yes oh it makes me think of moses his yeah. relationship with god like mm -hmm. we have that oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and like like they when you read like the account of in Exodus and just that back and forth between them, like they talk like friends, like, you know, God will give an instruction. Okay, God, but how does that look? And what do I need to do? Oh, okay, say it like this. Okay, uh, maybe should I say it like this? Like it's a real friendship. And like you said, Pastor Dennis, we have access to that every day. And it, it made me think about when you said, you know, we, we do get kind of trapped in that uh thought that we don't know what what God wants us to do or what, what he's saying, but we have his spirit and we have access to his spirit. And I remember a teaching Bishop would say that, you know, pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit, but also uh, pray in English, pray in whatever language you speak so that you can hear through your mouth and in your ears, what the spirit is saying concerning you. So that's so powerful. Pastor Dennis. So, so, so good. So good. Woo.
Pastor Dennis, that was excellent. <laughs> I mean, that was excellent. And I love that, um, you know, uh, we have access. And I love how you gave the example of the access that we have. You know, in Ephesians 1, it says that we carry the fullness of God inside of us. You know, we carry the fullness of God inside of us. We just have to go into the access that we have. You know, and we have to rest in that, you know, and understand that. Um, and, I, and I know it's like, I personally, I just said with God about everything, y'all. I mean, it's like when I get ready, when I wake up in the morning, it's like, I hear God giving me a song. I hear him giving me a word. I, I hear him speaking to me. When I wake up, I am listening for his voice. I know that he's woken me up. So I'm I'm listening for it. It's like, hey, I know you woke me up. So what you got for me today? You know, I, I embrace God in that way. I embrace my relationship with the Holy Spirit in that way. So that um, there's, I don't, I don't, um, and so that I don't see myself as a servant because of, because of the words that we've been hearing and because of the teaching that we received, I know that I can just go to God any kind of, any kind of way because he says that you just come, you know, so I come to him, y'all, when I say, <laughs> I don't mean like disrespectful, okay, don't get me wrong, I don't mean like disrespectful, but I mean like anything and everything that happens, I take it to God, listen, even when I am, you know, when I'm getting ready to get dressed, I ask God, what do you want me to put on, I'm, 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 hey, you're the one who created me, you brought me to this earth, you put me here, you know, y'all, I do that with everything, it's like, look, you brought me here, you put me here, you put me, you allow the situation so help me out help a sister out i i need your help you know because that's the access that we have you know that's the access to me that's that's when he said that we're a friend and he says that his he, that we carry the fullness of god and his holy spirit dwells within us then all we have to do is tap into that and receive that open ourselves up to what he has given us as a servant and i thought pastor dennis gave such an uh an excellent example of you know it's like a boss you know they tell us to do something we can't go in and just hang out put our foot up on the table and chit chat you know if we don't have that kind of access in that kind of relationship but God says, he's telling us that this is the access that you have with me. I sent my spirit and I've opened it up to you. So now you're my friend and I just want you to chill with me. I want you to rest with me. I mean, there's times I go in and I, y'all, I have my Bible. I have a, I have a routine of how I want. And I have the Holy Spirit say, no, we ain't doing that today. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> Stop, you know, I don't, I don't feel like it. What? Today, Lord? what? <laughs> Because he's not routine like that. You know, he's not rigid like that. He made us all different and he loves our idiosyncrasies and all of our little who we are and what we are. And he wants us to walk in with who we are. He doesn't want uh, me to try and be like Larisha and Larisha to try and be like someone else. He made you that way and he loves you that way. And he wants to have this relationship, intimacy with you the way you are, right? And so when you come to me, I, I remember in, in one of my Omni groups, one of the ladies said to me, she said that when she gets up in the morning, she says, okay, Trinity, let's go. I'm ready. You know, that's her relation. That's she's, she's checked into her access, you know? And so that's her relationship that she has with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And when we um, can fully embrace that he's here for us and no matter what, and he's seen everything, y'all, he ordained for us to be here at this moment, at this season, at this time. He could have had us here when Jesus was born, but he didn't. He ordained for right now, in this moment, he ordained for you and I to be here. And he made us exactly the way he wanted us. And he says, hey, y'all got access to everything you need, to the greatest of the greatest. And I'm your friend. Listen, I'm your friend. So come at me with who you are because I made you that way and I'm cool with that. I ain't got no problems with you. Man, and when you said he's he's not rigid like that, that is heavy for me because that's where, that's been a, what's the word called? It's been a barrier with my intimacy with Jesus lately where I'm like, I need to get back in a routine. And so it's cool. You know what I mean? Like, okay, I got to wake up at five o'clock. That's how me and Jesus do get up at five o'clock, do our thing. Okay. But I don't have to every time, like be on my knees, 
yeah. heavenly father, blah, blah, blah. Like not blah, blah, blah in a disrespectful way. But sometimes yeah. it's like, listen, bro, like I get all that. You know what I'm saying? The pleasantries I appreciate. <laughs> but at this very moment, I know what's on your heart. So can we just get to the real thing? Can we please just get to the real thing? But when I do the rigidness, mm -hmm. that's when it's like, I think about, oh, I have to get on my knees. Oh, and it just becomes this Pharisee type thing. And then before you know it, I'm just not even hollering at him anymore because I feel like it's such an a task to get to him rather than just being like, like you said, Jesus, what's going on? You up, I'm up, let's talk because I'm going through it, <laughs> you know? And I love that he will start talking to you. I mean, sometimes you want to go in that ridge way and he'll just cut through the chase. He won't even let you get there. You know, he just starts. And you go, wait, 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 let me write it down. Let me write it down. Wait, it's too loud. <laughs> okay, no, I'm not even, I'll, I'll remind you later. Don't even write it down. What? Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's so yeah. good. I love that, Pastor Janice, because even that I'm such the same way. Apparently, we're all the same way. Because that becomes like that routine for me can become works. And then I yeah. get anxious about, oh, I didn't do the thing that way. Mm -hmm. So Holy Spirit's not going to communicate with me. And then, like you said, then I'm like, since I didn't do it, well, mm -hmm. it's been two days. I didn't do it that way. It's too much. It's too much when it's like, okay. And I think he shows us his variety. If you just look out at the landscape of flowers, just the different kinds of flowers that he made. And I mean, the different vegetation that's in, I mean, he shows us how, 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 how much variety is in him, how, how much expression is in him and how, you know, it, it's like, that is who he is. And that's why he made us also different. He yeah. made us also different with all these idiosyncrasies, personalities, you know, he made us all that way because he is not a rigid God. He is a loving, carefree artist, you know, just thank you. Thank wonderful. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. He is. Yeah. And he loves us just that way, you know. That's the way he loves. That's why there's so many different types of watermelons, or so many different types of apples. There's just not one. You can, you can. God shows us who He is if we just open up our eyes. You know, He shows us in just a fruit. I mean, in just a food that He gives us. You know, He shows us. Um, you can look at lettuce, and there's a ton of different lettuce. I mean, it it, it just shows us that I'm not this rigid God, y'all. That's why He put us in the garden in the beginning, anyway, because then we'll learn about Him. <laughs> you know? I mean, it teaches you so much. You know, but yeah. he's, 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 that's not who he is. And yeah. we try and put him in a box. And then sometimes yeah. when we get so rigid, he goes, let me take you off this box. Yeah. Let me get you about that thing, man. Thank you, Elder Jackie. That was so helpful for me. Thank you. Oh my God. Yeah, he's so good. All him. Y'all know. Y'all know we pray. Y'all know who this is. <laughs> you know, we asked him. I wrote that something you said, Elder Jackie, I think ties this whole teaching up so wonderfully you said just in the last couple um, sentences you said that Jesus loves us the way we are so and I was thinking about this message about just again love the command to love each other the way Christ loves us and I'm like oh, that's it I mean yes Galatians 22 and the fruit of the spirit of love but we are commanded to love each other as we are that's that's it not where i the potential i see in elder jackie and what you know my plans for her or what i who i think she should be is who is elder jackie right now who is pastor dennis right now i because that's how god loves me i love you yeah. so Man. oh i love y'all i really do i really do. <laughs> love y'all too yeah me too um, we are going to have Elder Jackie pray us out, but before we do that, uh, Pastor Dennis, is there any um, like encouragement you want to leave for us as we start a new week? Honestly, listen to the message again. <laughs> uh, I That was the most personal message that God has ever given me, and um, it was life-changing. I mean, we we say things when we introduce speakers and, oh, he's, it's a dynamic message about this or it's a life-changing message about that. And that's awesome and amazing. This literally changed my life, this message. It literally changed my life. And not only mine, but because of the subject matter, it's not just going to change my life. It's going to change everybody's life that I interact with, mm -hmm. you know? And mm -hmm. so listen to the message again and really allow the Holy Spirit to really work on whatever he wants to work on you with because it's changing lives, yours first and foremost, and then every single person that you interact with. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Dennis. 
Mm. Elder Jackie, the floor is yours. All right, yeah, let's go to the Father in prayer. Mm. Thank you. Oh, Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, we just give you glory and praise. Thank you for this message. Thank you for how you use Pastor Dennis to speak to us about love. Thank you, Father, that it's not something that we do on our own, but the Holy Spirit, when we sit with him, he helps us and walks us through it. Thank you that we are not alone. And thank you that we are loved just as we are. And because we're loved just as we are, and we don't have to change or get into the, the rigidness or, 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 or be like someone wants us to be. We could just be who you made us. God, and as we embrace that, Lord, I thank you that it will help us to embrace loving our sisters and brothers just as they are right where they are. Father, we pray that our hearts and minds and spirits, God, will, will hear you speak to us in how to walk and treat one another with love. Our desire is to be completely just like you. We want our flesh crucified and we want you to transcend so that all people see is you and your love. Father, thank you that you are working on each and every one of us and that what we received is what you have for us right where we are. I thank you, God, that there is no condemnation, that we are walking in freedom and in joy and, in, in, and, and that you love us. And every single day you give us new grace and new mercy as we walk along this journey. You're not angry. You're not upset. You just love us right where we are. And you're teaching and transforming us so that we can love each other in the same way. Thank you for bringing us this word. Thank you for touching our hearts and doing a work in each one of us as we transition to look more and more like you and to share your word with the world. We give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Elder Jackie. Oh, I love that. Loving each other as we are. What? That's so much freedom in that. There's so much freedom. It's like a weight you can lift off yourself yes. and off of other people in your life. Yeah, that's powerful. Good stuff. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Dennis, for the teaching this weekend and for being with us. We're so appreciative of you being with us. You as well, Elder Jackie. I told you Pastor Dennis was going to be a good time with Elder Jackie. It's a good time. Oh, yeah. Yes. And family, we're so grateful that you are with us as well. If there's anything that we could do to be of support, to be in prayer with you, if there's testimonies you want to share, please reach out to us at prayer at cop.church. Um, and again, continue to stay on, on top of everything that's happening at the center. Visit our website and our mobile app. Um, until next time, family, walk in love. Yeah.